Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got an update. We've now covered 400 miles or 600 kilometers in the Nike Tempo Next Present. So here's the full review coming up. Hi well, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another review. My name is Ben Clark, 225 Marathon. And yeah, and I've been putting this shoe through its paces, all sorts of different speeds, distances and as I say we've now clocked up around about 400 miles you can follow all my training on Strava if you'd like so yeah first things first we'll start with some facts and figures then I'll go into my likes my dislikes and then a little conclusion at the end so if you just want to skip to a different section just do that uh, down below yeah, first things first, facts and figures. So price-wise, this is coming in around about 170 pounds here in the UK, around about 180 US dollars. Um, I bought this 100% with my own money off the Nike website, so nothing sponsored or anything in this video here. Very much, this is a road running shoe. I have taken this on some light trails and things, and it's handled it pretty well. But if you're buying this type of shoe, you, most of your miles are gonna be on, on the roads or very, very light sort of off-road trails. There's a 10 millimeter drop between the front to the back the back stack heights are 42 mil the front 32 so a 10 drop that is quite a lot as shoes go these days and weight wise this is a heavy shoe this is coming in at 324 grams for me just for comparison the outgoing model that it replaces the pegasus turbo 2s 256 for me so 70 grams heavier quite a big difference between these two shoes there and there's a composite plate inside this shoe not a carbon plate just a sort of a plastic composite plate it's not quite as stiff as a carbon plate but still helping propel you down the road really nicely and yeah if i could sum up the shoe in one word it would be an everyday racer it's very much it's not an all-out race shoe but then it's not your everyday training shoe as well it's that sort of middle ground here so it's someone that's already got those two shoes and is looking for something to do their t sessions their tempo runs their faster training workouts in right let's get started stuck in to the positives and all the likes. Right guys, let's start with the positives. So first things first, comfort. Now for me, out the box, this was one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. Really nice ankle protection. These little cushions they have in the back of the shoe, exactly the same as on the Next Percent and the Alpha Flies. Ankle really nicely locked down, no slipping at all. For me, the shoe was nice and wide as well. I do have my feet are slightly on the narrow side, but yeah, Nike do say on their website, if you have a very wide foot, then you should size half a size up. For me, this was true to size, the same I have in pretty much every shoe, apart from the outgoing. I did get half a size down in these, but this was back true to size for me in this shoe here. So yeah, as I say, foot nicely locked down, never really had any slipping issues at all in the rain, in the sun, however I was running, just felt super, super comfortable, really nice and supportive, really liking the foams. You've got the React foam at the back here and the ZoomX foam at the front, the cushioned pods as well. Yeah, just fantastic comfort shoe, really five stars all the way. Moving on to the second positive is these AirPods at the front. Not them, not them specifically, but I feel they've really helped my form running in this shoe. I'm coming back for an injury and yeah, I've really sort of been focusing on my form quite a lot and I've been doing a lot of miles in this shoe. But having these pods here, it really helps focus where your foot should be landing. If you're a mid or a four foot striker and that's how you want to land, you kind of feel for it a little bit as you go with each stride and it really helps you land in exactly the right spot to help your form and help reduce that chance of injury. So yeah, for me, having those pods there and just the structure of the shoe how it is has really helped my form. Moving on, it's quite hard to say that a 170 pound shoe is giving excellent value, but after the miles that I've done in this shoe, 400 odd miles, 600 Ks, yeah, I do land slightly on the outside. We've got this rogue bit of rubber here, but it's lasting pretty well. I, I've already bought the newer pair of the mango colors but yeah running in a brand new pair and this pair as well as i'm just coming to the end of this shoe's life i'm not feeling a huge difference this is still going strong after 400 odd miles yet the wear pattern on the on the bottom's not too bad i do land on the outside of my foot and roll in but yeah still lots of grip lots of tread there 
the back's pretty much untouched because I don't land there. So yeah, value-wise, it's holding up really well. I've put this through all sorts of weathers out in the mud and everything. It's just washed up good again. So yeah, got to give it a good mark for value. And finally, this is a fast shoe. I have really enjoyed doing some progressive runs and my speed sessions in this as well. It gets you up nicely on your toes. It pushes you forward. That carbon plate's working. The Zoom X foam is really, really nice. And then the React foam at the back here, just for that extra little bit of hard wearing to get a little bit more life out of the shoe as well. So super fast, really enjoyed running this shoe. And yeah, that's the positives. Now let's have a chat about the negatives. Right guys, negative points of the shoe. Well, it is a little bit noisy. <laughs> It's quite hard to describe this. I've never really noticed a shoe making lots of noise, but you do get quite a bit of a slapping noise as it comes down. I've never really experienced that sort of thing in a shoe before, and it, it can be a little bit off-putting at the start. For me, I normally run with my headphones and things, so I can't hear it over that, but like between music tracks, or if you're just running without music or podcast that day, you do notice a little bit of extra noise. But for me, I got used to it quite quickly, but it's something to bring up. I also noticed the grip when it was really wet wasn't that great. It depended on what sort of surface you were running on, but if you're running on sort of tarmac asphalt, as a lot of shoes in this sort of area can be, the grip was really not too good, a little bit slippy, but yeah, most of other surfaces in the wet, the grip was absolutely fine. And finally, my last negative point, this is a heavy, bulky shoe, as I said, compared to the outgoing model, this is a huge difference, 70 grams heavier for, for exactly the same shoe in exactly the same size. You do notice that extra weight with something like this on the end of your foot as a lever when it's swinging around like that through the through the running. But I would also say to that that this is very much designed as a training shoe. I actually look, think it could be a little bit of a positive to have a slightly heavier training shoe, training in your heavy shoes. So come race day, you put your light shoe on, your next percent, your alpha flies, or something like that if you're a Nike person, and then you're good to go and that sort of thing. But with that extra weight, you're getting a lot more endurance. It's lasting a lot longer. So yeah, it's just a point to note, some people aren't gonna like that extra weight. Right guys, so let's bring this review to a conclusion. Should you go out and buy the Nike Tempo Next Percent? Well, for me, it depends what type of runner you are really. If you wanna have that third shoe in your garage, then by all means go out. It's been a really fantastic shoe to me. If you're a midfoot striker, four foot striker, I think this is gonna be working very well. A heel striker, you could get away with it in the Pegasus Turbo 2s, you could roll nicely through the foot strike. But with this shoe, it's just a bit clumpy. And if you are a bit of a heel striker, I think there's gonna be a lot of instability there as the foot lands. So yeah, I would really say avoid it if, if you're a heel striker. But if you're a mid-foot striker, four-foot striker, you want that third shoe in your garage, you've already got your everyday training shoe that you're building your bulk miles in, and you've got your race day shoe, then this is gonna fit nicely in the middle. But I'd say get those first two other two shoes in your carriage first before considering adding something like this. So yeah guys, I'm gonna carry on using these shoes. I've really enjoyed them. I've really enjoyed adding them in to my training. If you wanted to consider something else, well, I've just got the brand new Hoka Rocket X in and that review will be coming up shortly. Again, a full carbon plated ratio here, so looking forward to that. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Let me know down in the comments. Are you using this shoe? What do you think of it? Are you gonna be getting it into your garage? Are you more of a Hoka shoe? fan and you want to be you want to see what's coming up with this as well and yeah let me know also anything you want me to get into review i'll get it i'll get it ordered up we'll get it in and we'll get it tested and yeah we'll let you know your my thoughts and I, let me know your thoughts as well thank you so much for tuning in i'm off to get some more training done thank you to the patreon supporters everyone on the website buying the merch the tees the singlets all of the amazing running hats we have as well the patreon supporters and the supporters here on youtube as well i'm off to get some more miles in the Nike Tempo Next Percent. So until next time, keep running, keep subscribing, and keep supporting. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.